Tim's asked me to talk about doing all things in love. And that's a challenge, isn't it? Doing all things in love. Um, maybe at times we, we're not sure of our place in church, are we? Maybe we're, we're thinking, that do I have gifts? Um, I'll be frustrated in our walk at the moment. Or I'll be even afraid to use our gifts. Maybe at times we've been hurt by people who have misused gifts. But, um, yeah, let me show you a more excellent way. Let's look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. Such beautiful words, aren't they? Such beautiful words. Let's, 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 um, let's really read them together and enjoy them. So 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Yeah. I'll pray. Lord, again, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of your word. Thank you that we could read it in our own language. Thank you that, that for, the, for the beauty of your scripture. Uh, open our eyes that we may see wonderful things in your word. Not, not just because they encourage us, but also because they challenge us. Help us now as we, we look together at these beautiful verses. Amen. Yes, yeah, so I've got three. I've got three three headings as a as a good evangelical. Um, don't worry, they're they're not all starting with the same letter. So my first heading is acting without love is wor worthless. Then the next one is real love is active, and then real love is forever. So they're they're the ones that are going to be be covering today. And again, it's great to be able to cover this actually in 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 context, isn't it? Tim's already talked about talked about context. Um, Maybe worth, uh, for me, especially as a student growing up, this, these verses were often ones in, the, in a, uh, using a, a, you know, a Christian wedding service, aren't they? But it's so good, so good to actually read it in, 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 the, in the context it is. We've been looking at the gifts in these past few weeks, haven't we? And it's so good to be able to understand what, what Paul is saying uh, to, to the church in, in Corinth, but also to ourselves. Right, so let's look, yeah, acting without love is worthless. So those, for those first few verses, if I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, that people can have great gifts. They can have great strength, or they can have great powers. Um, you think of worldly examples. Think of um, 
Gordon Ramsay. Sometimes I don't know if it comes off my Facebook. Sometimes I think you know the sort of the you know he's sort of shouting at people, isn't he? And obviously, me admit he's a, he's a great chef, isn't he? But I don't think I would want to be in his kitchen. He doesn't seem to be acting in love at all. Yes, yes, he's very gifted. Well, the same thing we've got football managers, isn't it? Football managers, well, often, was it Alex Ferguson, wasn't it? He was well known for the, the hair dry treatment, where he would like shout at someone so hard that it would be like the hair being, being dried, you know. It, again, yes, he was a great manager, but I'm not sure if I would be motivated. I wouldn't be motivated by his, his way of doing things. That's, that's not acting in love. And in the same way here, Paul's talking about, again, people doing great acts. We could speak in the tongue of men and of angels. And again, the tongues here um, can be thought of as languages. But also, I think in this context, it is talking about a, a special language that people use to communicate with, with God. That seems to be the natural thing. W whatever it is, that, that person has a, a, a giftedness with, with languages. But if they're, not, if not, if they're doing it in a, in, a, in a way that's not loving... It's like a noisy, noisy gong. It's like, you know, when the kids come over here, don't they? And they, they'll, they'll slide the uh, slide the symbol there. Or if someone at the back there, you know, maybe the, the PA goes up too loud. And it squeaks, isn't it? We all, we all wince, don't we? Norm normally when I'm doing it, but, you know. <laughs> no, no. It's, but again, it hurts us, doesn't it? It jars. It jars. And again, Paul talks about the, the other, other gifts as well. Prophetic powers. Understand all ministries and all knowledge. And again, if you have faith to move mountains but have not love, again, it's reminding people about with Jesus, didn't he? Jesus said, if anyone has faith that can move mountains. So again, Paul's referring to that. He's referring to that, that amazing demonstration of power. But it doesn't matter. If you haven't got love, it's, it's pointless. You're going to take that mountain, maybe, and move it and, and crush someone. That's, that's, that's what Paul's saying. And, and he goes on. He goes on. He, even, he says, if I deliver my body up to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. You think, that ultimate sacrifice, that idea of giving up your body, giving up your body to be burned, and, and again, the commentators have different ideas around that. It could be that people talk about um, maybe someone being branded in the fire, or it could actually mean you know, sacrificing yourself. Whatever, again, it's saying that someone's going for a great, great lens, a great self-sacrifice. But again, if they're not doing it in a loving way, it, it, it is nothing. So Paul, Paul is reminding Corinthians that love is important, not the gifts. And again, Paul's not saying, oh, it's a choice between love and the gifts. No. In the same way in, 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 we talk about the word and the spirit. It's not 50, you know, it's a bit of word and a bit of spirit. No. No. The, we, we need to do both together. You know, the church needs to choose love. Love is the first thing that comes from everything else. Love is the thing that gives us these, that, that, that is the control in the gifts. You know, as, as, the, as the children often sing, isn't it? The first thing in Galatians, isn't it? The first fruit of the Spirit is love. We know that, you know, it's not, it's not a coconut, as the children sing. It, it, it is love. Yeah. Right, I'll move on. Verses four to seven. Real love is active. Again, we can think of different ideas about love, can't we? We think of maybe what the world thinks of love. Uh, there's many songs about love, aren't there? You think of all the songs on Spotify or whatever. I think probably a lot of them, majority of them are about love, some idea of love. But it gives an idea that love is a feeling, doesn't it? An emotion. Uh, I think in this world, love is often confused with lust, isn't it? It's what excites us. It's, it's very visual. You know, you think of this, this modern age, isn't it? Everyone's on TikTok or whatever, and it's about what you look like. Um, it's an instant response. And I think even as Christians, we can be, we can be folded into thinking it's, it's a, the idea of love as a feeling. You know, if we can, be, we can be up or down, depending on whether someone's been nice to us that morning or, or not. But what is, what is love, according to this, this passage? What is love, as, as someone once said? That's a, that's a 90s music reference for, for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Paul talks about, so verses 4 to 7. 
Paul talks about two things love is, and then eight things that love isn't. So let's, let's look at these together. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yeah. And again, just to remind yourself of the context, Paul is challenging the church in Corinth about the destructive nature of the, of the gifts. There may be other as aspects of love, but Paul is reminding the Corinthians here of the areas where they have used the gifts in the wrong way. Again, there may be other aspects of love that we, we, we aren't on, wanting to focus on. But Paul is saying, saying to the Corinthians, these are the areas that you need to deal with. These are the things that you need to deal with. And again, when we talk about love in this passage, it's, 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 it's the word agape, the Greek word agape. This is a, 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 a self-giving self love, a love that's, that's self-sacrificing, that gives all wholeheartedly. It gives without expecting repayment. It gives because it loves. It does not love in order to receive. It's that, that sacrificial love, you know, that love that maybe the parents give we give to each other, you know, if we've got children, we give those things to our children, don't we? We, we give because we love them. We love our children. So yeah, let's, let's unpack some of these examples in verses four to seven. Again, love is patient and kind. And it's, it's that idea, isn't it? That idea being long, a long suffering, bearing up with the circumstances. Um, love is, it's that idea that the, the, the Lord gives us. His Lord is not slow um, in, in, in his promises, but he is long-suffering with us. He is patient with us, isn't he? Again, we know that we deserve judgment, but the Lord, because of his great love, the Lord gives us mercy. And again, it bears up. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Again, envy is, a, is an interesting sin, isn't it? Envy is what, what brought Cain and Abel uh, um, able into difficulty and, uh, and again envy is what brought Jesus to the cross uh, yeah and I think yeah so verse, verse um, second part of, of verse, verse 5 it is not irritable or resentful and I think the NIV translates it sort of um, better in this way it talks about love not keeping any record of wrongs um, and again, it reminds us, doesn't it? It reminds us of what the Lord does with our sins. He chooses to remember our sins no more. He puts them behind. He it's almost like he deliberately forgets them. That's, that's the love that we're dealing with. And again, it's very, very easy in this day, isn't it? That, that we, we think of um, in this world, people talk about our rights, don't they? We often, you know, we're in such a rights culture. Oh, it's my right to do this. It's my right to do that. But no, here, verse 5, love does not insist on its own way. We may insist on our, our, own, our own way. But no, all our rights, all our rights were surrendered at the cross. All, all we have is, is surrendered at, at the cross. And again, love does not boast. And I know that there's many people in this church who are, who are like that. Who will, who will serve without having to, to be asked even. So they'll, they will, they'll show their love by you know, fixing something or by bringing a meal to someone that they, they know, someone in their, in their fellowship group maybe, or someone, and again, look at the outpouring of love shown to, to Dermot and Kate. Again, that's, that's, the, that's that love that's, that's active and, and, and um, willing, willing to go the extra mile for each person. Yeah, and again, I like verse 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Again, more, more poetic language there, isn't it? And uh, yeah, 
sometimes it's difficult and we, we see those words, all things. We're thinking, really, Paul? Really? Do it, is it all things? You know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm struggling to deal with, deal with my children or struggling with, with a different issue, it's, you know, it's easier to go, oh, yeah, I can deal with some things. I can deal with some things in my life, some, some difficulties or some, some issues. But all things? Yes. Yes, we, you know, we are. We need, to, we need to bear all things. That's, that's, what, that's what God's love does for us. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And it's not, it's not easy, is it? It's not easy to have, to have that. There's certain people, isn't it? Certain people who will, we, we naturally get on with, and there are other people that we, we, we struggle with. Um... But again, we need to, to learn to, with, with God's help, we need to, 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 to develop that love that helps us to, to deal, with, deal with the issues, deal with things that are going on in our life. And we know, we know, don't we? Those of us who are Christians for a long time will know that the Lord gives us, he gives us what we need. We need to cry out to him. We need to have that, that patience. We need to have that, that, that love that helps us to, to bear all things. So Paul here, in, the, in these verses, is calling us into a deeper love. Um, deeper love for the Lord. And a deeper love for each other as well. Yeah, let's, let's apply it a bit more. I think it's a, it's a challenge, isn't it? It's a challenge. We, maybe, I don't know what our backgrounds are, but maybe when we've been... We've been wanting to, to use our gifts in love and we, we may be afraid to, to use those gifts because, you know, we've been, we've been hurt by someone having well-meaning. Um, I know I've been in churches and someone's, you know, maybe given a word and gone, oh, yeah, you need to follow this. And, you know, they're very, very insistent, aren't they? And you sort of go, oh, OK. And again, you can react, can't you? You can react to that. You can go, I don't know what you're talking about. Or actually you can go, OK. That person obviously feels that they have a gift. They feel that they need to tell me that thing at that time. That word is for me. But again, we need to test it, don't we? We need to test the spirits. Test, test what's been said. Um, yeah, so there are times when, yeah, we may, again, if we are if we're worried about not using the gifts because we ourselves have been hurt, but again, we, we, as Tim reminded us last week, we need to, to be humble with what we're given. Um, there's sometimes, isn't it, we think, oh, well, I can't, I'm not, I'm not sure if I have that gift. I'm not sure if I've got that gift perfected or anything. I've, I've, I can't use it until I'm flawless. Well, that's, that, that's not right, is it? If you think about anything we've been learning, anything we learned to do, like you think of, you know, learning to drive. If we've given up at the start, no, we need to practice these things. We need to practice, don't we? We need to keep using. The only way to, to, to learn to drive is to keep doing the driving lessons, isn't it? And that way you'll learn. And it's the same with these gifts. Uh, again, if we're using it humbly, if we're using it and saying to someone, oh, I think this is for you, or, or if, we, if we offer to pray to someone, or even if we, maybe we, we, we say a comforting word and maybe you don't get it quite right or whatever, <coughs> but that person will appreciate it. And again, that's where we need to bear with each other, don't we? We need to recognise the heart for what that, where that person's coming from. We need to recognise that person is, is sharing that, that thought or that comforting word or, you know, like, I mean, a silly example, like someone say, you know, they, they, they cook you a meal and then someone had that, they cooked, cooked a lovely meal for them, but they were vegetarian and they hadn't told them that. But they, they, that person still ate the meal in grace but, because they know that that person went for effort. And again, that's, that's what we need to do. We need to, 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 to bear with each other, recognising that person is saying that thing because they want, they want to encourage us or they want to help us to grow. They're not doing it because, oh, yeah, I'm an amazing you know, prayer warrior. I'm, I'm an amazing person. I, can, I make amazing food or you know, whatever, whatever our gift is. We, we, need to, we need to be humble and gentle. And again, we're using those gifts to build people up. We're not using it to uh, serve ourselves. We're not using it to, to, for us to give the glory. We're using it to, to build up the church. And again, 
That's not easy, is it? It's not, it's not easy. Again, we, you think, well, how can, I, how can I live up to that? But again, this, this chapter, Paul in this chapter is showing us the ideal. He's showing us what, we, what it should look like. And again, we all, we all know, we're all working. You know, even ourselves as leaders get it, don't get it right all the time. Uh, you know, we make mistakes as well. And again, you know, if there's anything that's, that's, that's been said from here that, that's upset someone or has hurt someone, then again, it's, it's not that we, we haven't meant to do that. We, we can easily, you know, I think I often I can be too quick to joke at times. And we can, we can say things that are wrong. We can, we can just, things come out of our mouth that we, we don't mean to. But again, hopefully you can see what we're, we're trying to do here as, as, as elders and as leaders to, to encourage you to use your gifts. Yeah. Yeah, and another, another application, isn't it? We can look at those, look at those verses, as um, some of the commentators said, and you can replace Jesus in those, in those for, for love. So Jesus is patient and kind. Jesus does not envy or boast. Jesus is not arrogant or rude. Jesus does not insist on his own way. Jesus does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus bears all things. Jesus believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And again, we know that. We've, we've celebrated communion already, haven't we? It's only because of Jesus' death on the cross that we can we can have that love poured out into our hearts. It's only because of the cross that we, we are truly free. And again, another, another challenge, another something that we can do is maybe put our own name, put our own name there. So, you know, Matt is patient and kind. Matt does not envy or boast. Matt is not arrogant or rude. And it's interesting, isn't it? We go along and maybe we go, oh, is that jarring? When I put my name in front of that bit, is that jarring? And that's something that, you know, that's the Lord saying, yeah, where do we need to work? Where do we need to, to, to pray? Where do we need to grow as well? And again, that's the amazing thing is that the Lord gives us, he helps us, he teaches us, he, he shows us where we need to grow. He shows us where we need to, to be loving, be more loving in our, in our lives. Yeah, and I like, in one of the commentaries, Guzik, in his commentary, I thought it was really, really helpful. It's, he, he says, giftness is not the measure of maturity. It's the display of our love. So I'll, I'll say it again. Giftness is not the measure of maturity. The display of love is. So in other words, it doesn't mean, oh, well, you know, oh yeah, you've been a Christian for a number of years and you've got all these different gifts, you're, you're amazing and all that. No, that's, that's, not, that's not someone mature, being, being, being mature. It's how do they show their love? How do they show that they're loving others? Again, are they, are they easily uh, provoked? Or are they easily resentful? Do they, do they find it difficult to be patient? That's, that's the measure. That's the measure of maturity, isn't it? How we display our love, not how many gifts we have. And that's, you know, that again, that's what Paul's reminding, reminding the Corinthians and is reminding us. Okay, so my, my last point. Again, real love is forever. Verses 8 to 11. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. And again, Paul is reminding the Corinthians that the, 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 gifts, the gifts are not the goal. The gifts are not the price. Love is. All the, all the gifts will pass away here. The, these, these gifts are uh, imperfect as they are. They are imperfect gifts for an imperfect age. 
but they will point to a time when we will see Jesus face to face. That's what, that's what verse 10 means. When the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. And then again in verse 12, now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully. So again, Paul is pointing to a time when we will see Jesus face to face. It's, it's, you know, it's so special, isn't it? That we, we now see, see things dimly. We see things in a, in a shadow, don't we? And it's interesting, if you, if you think about the, about the mirror dimly, and again, I think most of us have probably looked in the mirror this morning. Yeah, looking around, I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> most of us have looked in the mirror this morning. And, and again, in, in these days, the mirror is, is they're quite good, aren't they? But what Paul's talking about is a mirror that was, often the mirrors were a sort of bit of metal that was beaten to, to, to get a reflected surface. So it would be dimly. And so that's why he's using that illustration. And that's it, isn't it? We, we desire to know God. We desire to know the things. But, but even this side of the glory, we aren't going to understand these things. Um, and that's probably for good reason. It's probably for good reason, isn't it? That I, um, Spurgeon talks about how the Lord gives us what, what we needed. If we really saw what our sin was, we would be too, we would despair too much, wouldn't we? And if we really saw the glory of God, we would be filled with terror. You think of Moses, wasn't it? Moses, when they, people saw, saw the appearance of Moses, even that, they were trembling because of the awesomeness of the glory of God. So again, the Lord protects us from that. So now, yeah, now at the moment we do see, we see dimly, but praise be to God, we will see fully, won't we? It's so good, isn't it? That's it, that, that we will see, we will see God fully. We've already talked about, we've already sung about it, haven't we? You know, the lamb wins. The lamb has overcome. So, yeah. As I, as I was sort of coming into, coming into land, some, some last, thought, last thoughts. Again, we can, we can see, see love. We, need to, we can easily take love out of context, can't we? Love. Love is, is, is something that's so, so misunderstood. It seems to be in the, in the world that love can mean anything apart from what's, what's talked about in the Bible. What's talked about in these verses? Uh, you know, people talk about God is love, don't they? One John, one John four eight, God is love. But again, people can can misinterpret that. You see the the issues we've got in the you know some of my friends in the Church of England, some of my friends in the in the Methodist Church as well. Love is being refined, redefined. Love is well, it's okay, isn't it? Two men can be together, it's fine. Two women can be together, that's okay. It's just love, isn't it? But no, no. Here, God's word clearly says that, that, that God's love is, 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 is particular. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. <laughs> you know, it rejoices with the truth. And sadly, people deny scripture, don't they? They deny scripture. They override scripture because it doesn't fit in there with their lifestyle. And again, we need to... We, there is still hope. There is still hope, as, we, as we've looked at. There is, there is a purpose. So again, for each one of us living as, trying to live as Christians in this, in this week, there is a purpose. We know that. Say, so, well, as I've already said, the, the lamb wins. We, we who are keeping going as Christians in our, in, our, in our daily walk, when we are, you know, we see the news, we see what's going on, and we think, yeah, what, what is going on in this world? But we know that there is a purpose. We can, we can do something, we can talk to our neighbours, we can, we can share with them the, the, the love of God. We can share, we have a hope, don't we? The world so wants a hope. You just look at the circumstances around. There are so many people who are seeking so many people who are wanting to know something of, of the Lord, and that's what we can do. In that way, 
that we've all got that gift. We have all that gift to share the hope, the hope of, of, of Jesus, the hope that we will one day will see him face to face. Uh, yeah, so again, God is at work. So even on a Monday morning when we come, we come to our whatever we're doing, when we meet our neighbours, we can have a hope, we can have a, uh, a love that goes beyond, that goes beyond what this world offers. We have so much. That is, that, that's our gift to the world. Yeah. So, yeah, let me, let me pray and then I'll let Dougie and Ginny come up.